Today's tip is going to be an introduction to the website gapminder.org. To access the website, click in your address bar at the top of your browser and type in www.gapminder.org and press enter or whatever it is on your computer. Now there's a lot of information here about the website but the selection that we want to make is Gapminder World. So click on that. A chart which is uh, a two-dimensional chart with a y-axis and an x-axis. You'll also note that the chart contains lots of different colored dots and in the background has a year watermarked across it, in this case 2007. This graph is showing data points for each of the different countries of the world, not all of them obviously, but a large number of the countries of the world based on their population, which is the size of the bubble, and in this case the life expectancy at birth in years plotted against the income per person in the $1990 uh, revised and uh, which in this case is on a logarithmic scale. The beauty of this website is its ability to look at changes in different countries over different periods of time uh, in relation to different uh, aspects or variables relating to that country. So let's have a look at uh, some of the possibilities. Because sustainability is an issue which is at the front of a lot of our minds, let's have a look at charting the, the total carbon dioxide emissions released by countries, and that'll take a while to load. And let's chart that against, uh, let's leave that as the income per person, and plot those both as linear scales. Now at the moment the only country that we have data available for in this database is Japan, but if we head back through time using the scale down at the bottom of the graph here, we can head back to say 1850 or 1849. You'll also notice there's a little bit of a warning at the top here that the data is quite uncertain before the date of 1900. If we then press play, we can watch over the years as different countries become dominant in their release of carbon dioxide emissions. It doesn't take long before we see this yellow bubble, which is the US, quickly become one of the most outstanding countries in the world with regards to carbon dioxide emissions. We can then ask students questions like, which of these two other blobs here, in which case China and India, both countries which feature largely in our thinking at the moment in terms of what the future of our world is going to look like. What's particularly fascinating is to look at how long it's taken, say, a country like the US um, here to achieve a annual output of 5 million thousand tonnes of carbon dioxide per year by the year, by around about 1992, as opposed to the period, let's say, for example, from, say, 3 million tonnes to 5 million tonnes, we can see there's been a period of time where it's about 1992, so 1992 minus, say, 1962, we might say it's taken 30 years. Slide that scale forward and let's see how long it takes China over here to achieve the same amount of increase in their output in CO2 emissions. So moving forward, it's 1984, so now it's 1994, and China's breaching the 3 million mark over here, and give it, see how long it takes before in only a period of 1994 to 2004, a period of 10 years, the Chinese rate of increase of carbon emissions um, has increased by 2 million thousand tons. The US, on the other hand, took 30 years to achieve the same rate of increase. There are stacks and stacks of other um, things you can look at under the headings, say for example, like um, economy, uh, education, uh, health, and again, these are all just categories of data. 
I hope you found that presentation helpful. One of the challenges we're going to face over the next few years is exactly how we're going to go about implementing and using this wonderful technology that will be appearing in our classrooms. We believe at the Middle Years of Schooling Association that it's important that we don't just turn these machines into word processing tools or that we uh, merely use information services which allow students to only gain shallow answers to the questions that they're posing in the classroom. And so on that note, what I'd like to do is invite you to our international conference which is on in May this year from the 21st to the 23rd. Now, theme is specifically about ICTs and in the ways in which they can be used to uh, turn students on and the challenge for us as teachers to jump into some of this technology to understand what it can do and make sure that we're using it in ways which really bring a depth and an intellectual rigor if you like and richness to the work that we're doing with our students. So on that point I'd just like to say thank you for taking the time to learn more about engaging young adolescents in their middle years of schooling. Thank you.